Hello out there and welcome to the Shirley Douglas Show. Um, the Shirley Jones Douglas Show. I have to get used to it just like you. Yeah, notice the changes and I want to thank all of you for um, being loyal viewers and, and those of you who um, you know are joining me and, and, and there are so, so many of you are stopping me on the street to say, I watch your show. And, and, you know, I try to hug everyone except for if a guy is with his wife. I'll just say, give him a kiss for me or give him a hug for me, you know. I won't, that's all I'll do. But I do thank you and appreciate you for uh, watching in. And um, there's some, th some, let's see, I, I can't remember the guy's name. But um, we were talking at, in Giant Eagle. And when it was time for me to go, he said, whew, because I talked his head off. And I said, <laughs> What do you expect? I'm a talk show host. <laughs> so hello to you, um, the guy that I sat with on the bench in Giant Eagle <laughs> while I was waiting for someone to finish their shopping. Now, I'm going to, um, ha I have here on my show today a familiar face, and I know that you saw the title of the show, uh, The Tax Lady Speaks, and you know who that woman is. That is Miss uh, Michelle Alexander no, Michelle Jackson Alexander. Yay! You know, all these years, I still have to get it right. <laughs> you and a million other people. <laughs> so. so one of the things that I've asked her to start out doing is to um, talk about um, the, some things that you need to be careful about mm -hmm. when um, doing your taxes. So we're going to start out with that. All right. And who are you again? Who am I? Yes. Or what do I do? <laughs> Same thing. Well, we know all the things you do, but w what is your name again? <laughs> this is my friend. Can't, outside can't outside of her, the tax lady, she she's my you know one well one of three of four of my best friends. Yes, yes, yes. But she's the second best friend. Yes, and, and first I, first and, best friend. And I've survived. And she's still <laughs> who still she surviving. is. Yes, I'm but I'm, I'm so glad to have you on the show, really, because um, this woman floors me every show <laughs> on some kind of new information and, and something that uh, I don't know. It's always a shock. I know, but um, I don't know that I'll have any real shocker today because <clears throat> there are some changes coming down, but a lot of them haven't been. Um, you know, solidly decided by the President and Congress. We should have most of that information by December 31st. However, look for some of what um, you need to know about the certain credits and deductions and so forth not to be announced or settled probably until maybe mid-January or the end of January. Don't let it stop you from filing your tax return, uh -huh. however, because it, you can always amend it. But uh, <coughs> well, or, just just so you know that everything that um, <coughs> excuse me that you have said wasn't always something new. It was <coughs> right. <laughs> some oh, of the yeah. shockers came from things that we, you know, yeah. you know, that were current. Yeah, and those things they your those things people still need to be very, very cognizant of <clears throat> when it comes to your tax life. It's always about managing your tax life for your benefit. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? You have to pay attention to everything that's, that impacts it. And everything you do impacts your ability to have a successful tax life. And that tax life has to be adjusted and reviewed and looked at every year because the United States of America uh, Congress and presidents are making adjustments all of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, this year, for example, w they've coined the phrase fiscal cliff. I've been a tax professional for more than 30 years. I've never heard that term. So it's, it's something. Yeah, you know, it's, but it's it has a new it's, era. It's yeah. new. And so it has its impact. But, but it's the same thing as a depression. <laughs> <laughs> Just, Just about. Just so you know. <laughs> Just fiscal about. cliff, this yeah, the like, same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right on over. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, in terms of what an individual, what people should know, um, is basically the same thing. What you should pay attention to um, when you are, before you prepare your tax return or get your tax return prepared, 
all of your records need to, need to be in order. Do not go to someone to prepare your tax return and you cannot give them documentation to support what you're asking them to do because they cannot do it. Now let me repeat that. In the past, people would do it, but now the IRS has uh, invoked credentials and certifications for all of us who are tax professionals and CPAs and uh, even tax attorneys and so forth. Everyone has to be accountable. So if you come to me, for example, to get your tax return done and you say, well, Michelle, <coughs> I, I know that I, you know, I'm, I'm a delivery person and I'm, a, I'm uh, self-employed and I travel an average of 100 miles a day. I want to see your, your log, okay? And I want to see your receipts, and I want those receipts to balance against your bank account so mm -hmm. everything matches. So that when I, because what I have to do as, your, as the person preparing your tax return is fill out something called a due diligence form now for IRS so that Whatever you're telling me, I have, to, um, I have to confirm and verify to the Internal Revenue Service that I examined your documents. Uh -huh. And I know that what, I don't have to send them your documents, but I have to certify that I reviewed those documents and everything that, that, that is on your tax return mm -hmm. is there as a result of that particular review. Now, um, does that mean that your neighbor can't, can no longer do your taxes? Your neighbor can do your taxes as long as your neighbor has complied with the certification requirements that IRS says you must now have in order to, pre if you are a paid pre uh, preparer. Oh, a, a paid, if you that, are that being is the paid, key word. That's paid. the key word. If you're paying me or anybody else uh -huh. to do your tax return, then we have to have what is called a PTIN number, which is a preparer tax ID number. Uh -huh. And in order to get that number now, uh -huh. We have to um, take 15 hours, in 2012 it was 15 hours of uh, certified professional ethics classes. Uh -huh. Where did you take those? Well, I took mine with um, the Pennsylvania Tax Institute. Uh -huh. um, they're part of, I think they're on a grant from Penn State University or okay. the Pennsylvania University of, of, um, in Philadelphia. I'm not, I think it's Penn State University. There are companies and schools that are providing those. I think, you know, um, you need to research, if you're a paid tax professional, to research where you have, you know, you have to go to take those classes because you can't, you can't get your PTIN number without taking those 15 credits in mm -hmm. 2012. Now, do you have to send IRS your certificate once you take those classes? No, you don't. But if you tell them you took those classes and they discover that you did not, you're in a little bit of trouble. Okay? So it would be who so our viewers to ask their tax prepare right. if, if they do indeed have that PTID number. PTIN PT? number. You okay, know. PTIN so, number. But what, what's more important is when you, when you finish your, your 15 hours of CPE, you get a certificate, and your certificate should go up somewhere. It should be in, in plain view so that your cl uh, clients know when they come in, they can see, oh, wow, she's got her certificate right here. Now, this is December that we're doing the show. This is December 4. You only have until December 31st to, to get, get your PTIN, right, and you can't get your PTIN without taking the classes. Uh, IRS is not yet set up where, because eventually what they're going to do is say, I want to see your certificate, or they will make you identify which course you took and, and, um, to them so that they can verify that you really did take the uh -huh. 15 hours. Right now, they're not set up to, to receive that information. So they're, they're going on the honor system, assuming okay. that when you tell them when you apply for your PTIN renewal or in the, for the first time mm -hmm. that you have, and they ask that question on the application, have you completed your 15 hours? And you say yes, they're assuming you're telling the truth. Right. Okay, so. And you <laughs> may get away with it until the one little time exactly, thing happens. Exactly, that's right. 
you know, so anyone who is going to a tax professional to have your taxes prepared and you're paying that person, do your due diligence and make sure that that person has met all of the right requirements for preparing your tax return. Because there are a lot of things, like when I went to my class, this is, this is the manual. This is it. Yeah, Look at, thing. it's like, it was, and, and we, we went through this entire book in two days. Can you imagine? It was very intense, but it was, it was, um, it was necessary for us to have you, this did information. You, did you make a mistake? <laughs> no, two days. Eight to four. <laughs> two days. Or eight to four forty-five, I think. Yeah. Eight thirty. We started at eight thirty, eight forty every day, or for those two days. And we broke for lunch, of course, and we had a couple of breaks in, in between. But we didn't finish until like four forty five. We we go we and we went and they <coughs> the entire book in two days, okay? <laughs> wow. Right, right. So two consecutive just, days? Two consecutive days. And so I brought this book, you know, to say, not that any of us are like brainiacs or anything, but the intensity of what happens in the IRS um, system is, is not something to be taken lightly. Wow. This is your tax life. And so we have to know going in, if, if we're asking you to pay us to help you, uh -huh. the taxpayer, then, Your ducks then we have, have to be in order. Our ducks have to be in order. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> I'm scared to ask this question. Oh, she's tired. She can really start itching in a minute. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go again. Now, what do you, what do you perceive to be? The biggest change, the most mm. significant change that's going to take place when people say, here, will you do my taxes? I think the biggest change, the biggest issue that will happen for the 2012 year is that people are going to see a really big difference in their refunds. Now, because is this is this uh, contingent on our president and our and our uh, Congress coming together? You because if it. they don't, we're in we're in some you're, hot water. You're in some big so trouble. so you guys are prepared to handle that no matter what happens. Absolutely, but you know, last year when when you had me on the show a couple of times, and I said, you have to realize that no one gives you anything for free. It is not for free. They may make adjustments. They may say, you know, we're going to re release or, or reduce the amount of taxes that employers can withhold. But somewhere down the line, somebody's got to pay for that, okay? And that someone's coming back around, coming back around to you, the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to interpret, so to speak, what it means when they say, okay, we're going to give you this, we're going to reduce this, we're going to reduce that. What does all that mean? And how do I make sure that I'm still going to spill out okay mm -hmm. in the long run? So, so I think that's, that's going to be the biggest challenge. That's going to be the biggest thing this year for 2012. If the, t if the Bush tax cuts go away completely, it is not going to be pretty. Mm -hmm. It is not going to be pretty. Absolutely. Yeah, um, uh, we had a, a kind, not, not a class, but um, Bishop spoke about uh, this uh, tax cliff. Mm -hmm. um, the fiscal cliff. The fiscal cliff. Yeah. And um, Eben, do you know Eben? Yeah. He, yeah, he gave a definition of, a of, of, of it so that, mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone could understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, and I say within myself, it, it, it's just a pretty name for depression. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you probably hit the nail on the head more so than what, what, it is. What, what his definition may have been. But that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's, that's exactly what's going to happen. It's going yeah, to send us into a spiral. A world, yeah. Well, 
for sure. So there are, but you know, uh, what what people need to know, what taxpayers need to know, is that you still can manage because if we get to where we're, we're dealing, we're falling off this cliff, or the tax the tax cuts go away completely, you still can manage. You can set yourself up for for tax uh, season 2013. Mm -hmm. The one thing that you do want to do, everybody, is prepare, is at least know where your taxes will fall for the 2012 filing season. Prepare your tax return early, January, February, so that if you end up owing you at least know how much money you need by April 15th. Right. But if you wait till April 14th or 15th, and you're sitting before me and, and I'm saying, you've got a tax bill, you owe the federal government $4,500, you're well, saying, But, but oh. wouldn't this more, more so affect um, 2013, our taxes that we've earned? No, the Bush cuts expire on December 31st, 2012, right. and they will impact some of what you've already what has already happened in 2012 in terms of your income deductions credits and so forth there are some that are automatically on what is called the extenders bill okay that are up for extension but they haven't been approved yet right okay so i don't, I don't really <laughs> i'm wondering if my viewers are in the same predicament that i am because if something expires on the last day of the year, mm -hmm. why would it affect 2012 taxes? Because you made money in 2012, and if it expires, then you're not going to be able to use it to your benefit. It, it's just the way that it's set up. It's set up so that if it goes away, it goes away. You're, you know, it doesn't okay. include. Well, it doesn't well, may include I find my, 2012. May I find my taxes on. December the 29th? <laughs> no. 30th? <laughs> no. No. You can't, IRS will not accept a filed tax return, and I don't have the exact date, but last year in, 2000, in, 2000, in January 2012, uh -huh. we could not file for a 2011 tax return, I think, until like January 17th or 20th. That was the first day that they would accept a filed return. So January, in, in January 2013, you know, like January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, we can't, I can prepare a tax return, but I can't file it mm -hmm. until probably around the, the same date, the 16th, 17th, or, you know, 18th of, of January. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. <laughs> what do you guys so, think about that? Well, it's always been that way. That's not new. Mm. That's not new. Right, because employers have until January 31st to, to give you your W-2, your That's 1099, true. and so forth. And some companies may ask IRS for an extension, which, w which would mean that you won't get your W-2 until mid-February. Uh -huh. I think an employer that says, I need an extension, I think IRS gives them a date of February 20 to get, to get their... Uh, W-2s and 1099s, right, out to their people, and then at that point, you know. But the thing is, is you can, as the taxpayer, the most, one of the really important things to do is to gather your records, is to make sure you have everything in order, okay? And so um, you'll find that the better organized you are, the better tax uh, season you will have for yourself mm -hmm. as a taxpayer. So, okay. I don't know if I like her today. What do you think? <laughs> she loves me. She, you, you know, she hey, loves I don't me. like these things she's saying. Well, so it's, it's, it's. No, no, no. <laughs> Around here, we do away with the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you're in trouble today. Oh, my sister. goodness. Oh, oh my, goodness. my goodness. Yeah, so. So, it's a lot to be. That, that's. It, I'm just wondering, um, you know, if they're going to come together. But, but during this will. election, they you will. know, uh, people sent a strong, strong message that, mm -hmm. you know, you guys have to get your things together. Well, absolutely. And, you know, because we, the country cannot continue to go 
in a direction that it's going and still call themselves call ourselves a superpower you know when your people are 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 suffering for whatever reason yeah. then it's time to stop drop pay attention and let's yes. let's let's get realistic about um, what we have to do what we have to do and it's not about you know the thing is it's it's if there would be if the politicians would would for the most part, stop playing politics right. and just deal with the issues and what you know and so forth, and not think about, oh, you know, I got to think about my reelection. It's not about your reelection. You're supposed to be there to to help. Yeah. But if they get something gets lost all the time. Yeah, it does. Uh, and it's, you know, so it gets lo it's get lost all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing Obama can't be dealing with that because he can't go, he can't. Uh, and run again, again. <laughs> he's so he's done you yeah. know but but like yeah. he said you know america sent him a clear message mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um yeah. you know he's got to get on the um but well that thing that you sit on i don't hold oh, the pot, pot. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right well, we'll just call it pot we'll yeah. just call it a pot right. and, and then we'll yeah. just leave it at that yes okay, okay what's the right. next big thing you got then, well, are we, we're still talking about what taxpayers need to do mm -hmm. to pr protect them, to um, protect themselves. So take a look at your withholding. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I don't want to. I don't. I want to keep everything consistent. So you organize your your records, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. And every January, you should take a look at your uh, W four. Now, when you get your W-2, that's going to tell you how much money you made totally, the amount of tax of money that came uh -huh. out. If your gross amount says you made $72,500 and your federal withholding box next to it says that they only withheld $5,000, you are under withholding, you are in trouble. So you need to adjust your W-4 so that much more comes out. $72,500, So I your care. W-4 is what you have with your employer. Right. And you say, you tell your employer how much you want taken out. You tell your employer what, stat, you know, you, it to ask you for your status, single, yeah. married, et cetera. And most people want to put, oh, I'm married, I'm gonna put myself, my wife, and a child and claim three. No, I don't care if you're married or single. On your W-4, the smart person is going to put zero all the way down and very possibly on the front of the uh, W-4 uh, the, at the bottom on line six, you're, it says, please withhold the additional amount of, you should put a number on that line, $10, $15, $50, whatever but you should put something on that line. You are better off letting them withhold and more money and giving it back to you because it doesn't cost you anything. You're not gonna be charged interest or penalty because they withheld uh -huh. more money, okay? And some people think, well, I'll just take, the, you know, instead of doing it that way, I'll put that money in a savings account and so then I can just use it at will. Well, you can do that too but you're paying interest on that money. Right. And you're gonna, when you take what, then they're gonna send you a 1099 that says you have, uh, you made uh, $3,000 interest on this money, and so now you're gonna pay taxes on that. So why not let the government hold it? It doesn't cost you anything, right. and you'll get it back. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, Are you gonna listen to what she said? <laughs> I hope so. Well, that's the point of this. We certainly hope you will because, yeah, you know, I am such a hypocrite <laughs> because there is something that she said that I still haven't done, but um, I'm kind of glad I didn't, but I think I should for this year. What's that? Oh. I will never tell you. I do <laughs> not want to get, I do you not want to get kicked in my shin. I'm not going to kick you, Miss Shirley. Oh, mm. yes, she will. Boy, those, oh, Keeping she, those she, records. She, her heels are this tall. <laughs> She will get me, Keep it but, but um, I think it worked for me this year. I don't know. I wouldn't try it for next year. Though. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, um, taking a look at that from every year, 
your W, you know, what you're ending up with making and what your, uh, and then making that adjustment in January. But you don't have to wait the entire year and you shouldn't. You should take a look at your pay stub every paycheck, especially if your um, gross amount varies because of maybe overtime or reduced hours or, um. or whatever the case may be. You definitely want to take a look because if your if your uh, pay stub says you know your gross amount is seven hundred and seventy five dollars for example, and your taxes your you want your tax amount to be somewhere between ten and fifteen percent of that coming out. Mm -hmm. If that's not the case, then you you can sign a new W four right away. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait a year. You can sign a new W four every paycheck if you mm -hmm. want to. They can't, your employer can't stop you from doing that. Right. Uh, so, so pay attention to that. The other thing that is new is that in 2012, all employers were instructed and required by IRS to withhold local taxes. Now, I talked about that once yeah. before. So local tax is coming out of everybody's paycheck which is going to be a good thing because now all the little nooks and crannies and boroughs and so forth will have tax money to fix it. It's nothing new for city, city dwellers, right? No, Pittsburgh but, but, but if you <laughs> has always in, had a local Well, Wilkinsburg, tax. I think, is now Pittsburgh. Oh, is it? But, mm -hmm. huh? Well, here's what's happening is that all the little nooks and crannies are not going to have their own taxing office or agency. They're going to be grouped together in clusters because they don't have the money to pay people like to sit in an office. Yeah, they'll uh, be grouped together South in clusters. Hills has mm -hmm. their little group. Well, they'll be like Monroeville. all of the, all of the, all of the uh, surrounding communities of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh may be the agency that has to collect the money uh -huh. and send it to the little nooks and crannies uh -huh. all around it. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. They'll come up with a, a schematic and a chart soon, uh -huh. you know, for who's going to collect what for which borough, uh -huh. you know. Or municipality, yeah. so and that started effective 2012. 2012, 2012, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. Well, I know so. Wilkinsburg is getting their streets clean, cleared up as well as Pittsburgh, I but I, I I heard it. Yeah, that is that is now Pittsburgh. Yeah, part yeah. of the city of Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not surprised because it's 152. Because I figured anything that's 152, like Penn Hills, Wilkinsburg, is probably going to be part of the city of Pittsburgh. Probably, no. Um, and Hills has their own thing. Well, but they're one five two three five. So I'm talking about well, they yeah they do, but they may for the for the sake of the new rule have to turn it over to Pittsburgh. Uh, is what I'm saying. I don't well, know. I you, well, they do have a taxing agency in in Pittsburgh, but they may be doing away with it. I'm not sure uh -huh. because the the state has said we're going to have clusters. Uh -huh. Okay, so okay, yeah, but I don't know until I until I see it. Yeah. Yeah. So when are you gonna know that? Oh, we'll know in time before before filing season. Trust me, really? they'll send, they'll let us know who to send the. Because that's gonna be a mess for you guys too, right? No, it's a mess for the employers. It's not a mess for us as tax professionals. Mm -mm. All we have to do is complete the the forms, and most of their forms all look alike, and they all request the same information. Um, so it's not it's the employer. It's a yeah. mess for the employer, not for not for us. Yeah, because it, it, they have employees from all over the place. Right. The only the only thing is most of the little the, what will what will probably happen is that the software companies will now try to figure a standard form for local municipalities, uh -huh. and local boroughs, so that we as tax professionals don't have to do the handwritten local tax return right. which will be nice yeah you know because I hate doing those because if yeah. you do you would you have to make a phone call to the borough I do because they don't have their forms online right. so you can't download it and there's no fillable form so I have to contact the borough or the so municipality. they're getting a, a, a barrage of calls themselves oh yeah absolutely they have to. yeah yeah and that's sure. that's and, it's, and that's the thing and they're yeah. small anyway so. exactly exactly mm, 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 mm. So, yeah. Well, better than being. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. I don't so, like little stuff like yeah. that. And then, you know, another, um, which is the exact same advice that I've always given, is that 
file your tax return. You have to file because the penalties for not filing far exceed the penalties for paying, uh, for not paying if you owe. So there are people who they are, um, <coughs> they just get so afraid of uh, IRS. And sometimes, you know, even though I know that their IRS is really trying their, their level best to be a lot more taxpayer friendly, uh -huh. there are still, there's still the fear that when you get that envelope, you're like, oh, 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 you know. Oh, well, I